Imagine sitting in a sleek capsule, levitating inside a low-pressure steel tube, and traveling at speeds of over 700 miles per hour. In a recent interview, Tesla CEO Elon Musk shared his thoughts on how Hyperloop worked and explained why it will do more good for the environment than even Tesla. It's just a low-pressure tube with a pod in it that uh, runs on, on air bearings, on air skis. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> the futuristic transportation system, conceptualized and developed by US tech billionaire Elon Musk, is closer to reality than most people think. After the latest announcement by Elon Musk's boring company, we now know where the first location is set to be. Today, we will explain everything about this huge announcement from the boring company and the details of its first Hyperloop location. We will also cover why this technology would do more to save the planet than Tesla and how it will totally devastate the domestic aviation industry. Stick around to the end. This is a good one. Elon Musk has announced the first location for his highly anticipated Hyperloop transportation system. The 2023 launch will take passengers from Washington DC to New York City in just 29 minutes. The Boring Company recently raised $675 million, and Elon Musk has revealed it will all be used to deliver the Hyperloop. For anybody that isn't sure what exactly one is, we'll quickly explain. The Hyperloop is a network of tubes that are pressurized to remove the air. This allows train-like vehicles known as pods to travel through at high speed, as they have almost no friction to work against. The pods can glide at ridiculous speeds, thanks to non-contact levitation and propulsion systems. Compared to traditional flights or trains, the Hyperloop will significantly cut door-to-door -door transit time for all domestic travel. Many companies worldwide are exploring what Elon refers to as the fifth mode of transport. Virgin Hyperloop was the furthest along, having successfully tested the concept with human passengers. However, they have recently confirmed it will go no further, which demonstrates just how complex this project is. But Elon can land rockets and seems to have now cracked the Hyperloop, with the first confirmed line from Washington DC to New York City that will take just under half an hour. Musk first presented the idea in 2013 with a proposed line between Los Angeles and San Francisco in his Hyperloop Alpha paper, claiming that it would be cheaper and faster than a projected high-speed rail link. He claimed that his Hyperloop would be safer, quicker, more inexpensive, weatherproof, self-powered, and less irritating to those who live anywhere along the route. A Hyperloop service is the answer for travel between cities that are less than 1,500 kilometers or 900 miles distant. Further than that, Supersonic air transport will be more practical, he said. The tech mogul has explained how the Hyperloop tube will work. The core concept of Musk's Hyperloop is that passenger capsules or pods ride via a tube, either above or below ground. Vacuum pumps are used to remove most of the air from the tubes to minimize friction. Reducing air resistance is one of the most energy intensive aspects of high speed flight. To help us understand, let's compare air travel to the Hyperloop system. The reason airliners fly at high altitudes is to travel through the less dense air. Now, the Hyperloop system encloses the pods in a reduced pressure tube, essentially allowing the trains to move at aircraft speeds while staying on the ground. According to Musk's model, the pressure inside the Hyperloop tube is around one-sixth of Mars's atmosphere, which is an exciting contrast given Musk's other pursuits. What about the physics behind the capsules? Musk's Hyperloop capsules float just above the tube's surface on a set of 28 air-bearing skis, similar to how an air hockey puck floats just over the table. One significant distinction is that the pod generates the air cushion rather than the track to keep the tube as basic and inexpensive as feasible. A linear electric engine would propel the pod to high subsonic speeds and afterwards provided with a burst after every 70 miles. In between, the pod would glide quietly in near vacuum. The pods will be propelled by an external linear electric motor, which is essentially a rolled up circular induction motor, similar to the one seen in the Tesla Model S. According to Musk's plan, the Hyperloop would be fueled by solar panels mounted on the top of the tube, allowing the system to create more energy than it requires to operate. Many are anticipating the first location of the Hyperloop to be as presented in Elon's conceptual Hyperloop Alpha paper between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Additionally, cities in California, Florida, and Texas are in talks with the Boring Company 
about implementing new loop systems. But it seems the company have their eyes on first delivering a hyperloop between Washington and New York that is set to revolutionize the commute between the two cities. The current travel time is between three and a half and four hours, depending on if you are driving or taking the train. And the Hyperloop, it is expected to reduce this to just 30 minutes travel time. In a recent tweet, the company announced that Hyperloop testing would begin at full scale later this year. Before the official tweet, Elon has been chatting on Twitter about the Hyperloop with his followers writing, from a known physics standpoint, this is the fastest possible way of getting from one city center to another, for distances less than about 2,000 miles, he said. Despite claiming to be too busy, Musk has always been enchanted by the Hyperloop concept. In 2017, he tweeted that he had received verbal clearance for a New York to Philadelphia to Baltimore to Washington DC Hyperloop which we believe to be the basis of the recent confirmation. The Washington Post claimed that Musk's boring company acquired a New York permit for some preliminary excavation work. The Maryland Department of Transportation also granted conditional approval to build a boring company tunnel from Baltimore to Washington, allowing it to dig beneath state roadways. How different is this mode of transport from traditional rail transport? First, they are a lot quicker. The pods should be able to reach speeds of up to 700 miles per hour. Second, rather than utilizing wheels like a train or automobile, the pods are meant to float on air skis or utilize magnetic levitation to eliminate friction, similar to how an air hockey table works. Proponents think that Hyperloop might be less expensive and faster than rail or vehicle travel and more environmentally friendly than air travel. It is also faster and less expensive to construct than regular high-speed rail. Consequently, the Hyperloop might relieve congestion on congested roadways, facilitating transit between cities and potentially yielding significant economic advantages. One of the most interesting aspects of a Hyperloop is the potential to completely disrupt the domestic flight industry. Right now, if you want to travel from LA to New York, you can drive, get a flight, or take a train. Driving takes six to seven days with some overnight stops. Most people just don't have the time. Trains take two days and 22 hours, again far too long, and an exhausting experience. Taking a five-hour flight is really the only option. However, aircraft are one of the fastest growing sources of emissions. Emissions from domestic aviation alone have increased 17% since 1990, to account for 9% of greenhouse gas emissions from the US transportation sector alone. A Hyperloop, on the other hand, is aimed to be net carbon neutral, meaning it generates from solar as much energy as it uses. It also uses no hydrocarbons at all, only relying on an electric engine to propel it along its journey. If Elon Musk were to execute his vision and the Hyperloop became a widely adopted method of transport, the aviation industry would be at a serious risk of huge disruption. But we may not even get that far, as the idea of vacuum tubes in a transport system isn't entirely new. In 1864, the Crystal Palace Pneumatic Railway in Victorian South London used air pressure to propel a wagon uphill and a vacuum to draw it back down. Similar pneumatic tube systems have been used to transfer mail and goods between buildings since the late 1800s, and the same system is currently used to move money around in supermarkets. The vac train concept, conceived by Robert Goddard early in the 20th century, is a clear forerunner of the Hyperloop. Since then, several similar ideas have been offered without much success. However, it was entrepreneur Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha paper, published in August 2013, that rekindled interest in the notion by laying out how a modern system would function. Elon Musk is the most successful entrepreneur of our generation and has revolutionized the space industry, car industry, and payments industry. If history is to be a guide to the future, he will soon revolutionize the domestic travel industry. Would you ride a Hyperloop at 750 miles per hour? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and make sure you're subscribed to Velocity for the best tech news.